recall that I tried to describe foliation in CN given by homogeneous form. of type uh, and this big A i are homogeneous polynomial of degree u with integrability condition Maybe an hypothesis, classical hypothesis on the zeros on the singularity of the form. And there are two types of uh, form. The first is called uh, decritical. That means that uh, at uh, each moment, the lines passing by zero are in the kernel of the form. This is a decritical cause case. And in this case, the foliation in Cn goes to Pn minus one. So the critical case describes foliation on uh, Pn minus 1. A non decritical case is the case when the, the polynomial interior product by a radial vector field I denote by P nu plus 1 is this is this polynomial and I suppose that this polynomial is non identically zero. If you take uh, the zeros of the polynomial in u, u plus one, the zero is a uh, in fact uh, is a uh, a leaf or a union of leaves and singularities. In my picture, here we have singularities for the hypersurface, but also for the foliation. The lines by zero are rule this polynomial. And I have mentioned a lemma, this lemma which says that the meromorphic form omega nu over Nu plus plus one is a closed meromorphic one form. And I want to give a proof à la carton. Uh, the coefficient uh, of Omega, big omega, are rational function, rational polynomial, homogeneous uh, rational poly uh, function 
half degree. You see the A uh, half degree mu, and the P mu plus one is half degree mu plus one, so half degree minus one. And this implies that the Lie derivative, the Lie derivative of big omega, recall it's uh, exactly the interior product of the differential of omega plus the differential of the uh, omega. But uh, you see that uh, this thing is exactly uh, the differential of the quotient of its uh, differential of one, so this is zero. And the lead mm -hmm. derivative of a form of degree of degree k, if beta is uh, one form of degree with coefficient of degree k, then the Lie derivative of uh, beta is exactly k plus one beta. So here you have zero. So you have this is zero, and now you come with the integrability condition. And you apply at nu the radial vector field by interior product, and you obtain uh, the one. It's an uh, interior product of o big omega with the vector field plus uh, interior product of d omega, this is zero, wedge omega. So it's a calculation a la carte. So we have the lemma. And now there is something like uh, decomposition of rational function in one variable in simple element. And this is a little bit difficult. I give the, the statement here. So I denote by I denote by P1 Ps, the component irreductible, irreducible component of P mu plus one, but maybe there are multiplicities. I don't remember the notation of multiplicities, something like where the any are positive number. And it is possible to prove it's not it's not easy because it necessitates some topological ingredient. It's possible to prove that the uh, the form, the closed form this quotient is exactly uh, a term with uh, residues so these are complex numbers and an exact Term, which is a rational function of degree 
homogeneous of degree zero and with pole along uh, the zero of the pi. And that means that the of foliation, the leaves, uh, the foliation given by omega nu, the leaves uh, are the level set of the multivaluate function sigma log polynomial pi plus h h. And this level set are in fact very difficult to understand. And they are topological problem, something like ergodic problem, something like arith arithmetic problem on this uh, function, multivaluate function. So the description of these uh, leaves of this level set will be met are uh, difficult. For example, it's possible to say when the, this level set are dense or not. Just a comment for specialists. It's a, this type of form which induce foliation on CN can be extend, can be extending to the projective spaces when you take a CN as an aff affine chart of PN possible to extend. And if you make a blow up of the origin in uh, CN, you obtain a projective space. Uh, it's an excep exceptional divisor. In this uh, space, you have the projective hypersurface P nu plus one equals zero. And um, you have now uh, I make a picture in Pn in the blow up of Pn at zero, so you have a vibration. Here is a Pn plus one at zero. You have a vibration <coughs> by line, by P1. And uh, you have, if you want, a cylinder. And this cylinder is a leaf of the new foliation after blow up. And outside the cylinder, the leaves are exactly transversal to the fiber P1, the other fiber. So we have another example of foliation 
transversal to a vibration. This special vibration. And in this case, the holonomy representation is a representation of the pi one of the complement of the cylinder in, in fact, in the <coughs> in PG, in the automorphism of P1, and recall that this is uh, PGL2 of C, with, uh, in fact, abelian image. So, the description of this representation and the description of the orbit of the group here give information of the level set here on the leaves of this type foliation associated to closed meromorphic form. But it's a little bit long and complicated. Okay. So now I want to speak a little bit on uh, the local theory, local theory of foliation in C2 and Cn, theory of singularities. So you have in the note. C'est bien la mise au point, Rafik? So, I want to speak of uh, reduction of singularities for foliation. That means uh, you have a foliation, maybe uh, it's a with a singular point. Maybe the singular point is a little bit complicated. And we want to make transformation such that after the transformation the new singularities are a little bit more simple. So I present now in fact uh, the notion of blow up in C2. So blow up of a point for example zero in C2. The blow up of C2 is uh, following space. You have C2, you have the origin here, and you take a point. And when you take a point different of zero, this point det determine, characterizes the line which pass by zero and m. So line D passing by through zero and m is completely characteri characterized by the point. And if you take now the point zero, there are many possibilities for lines to pass by zero. All the leaves, all, all the lines, vector space of dimension one. So I consider the space which is in the product C2 by P1, P1 is a space of lines by zero, M and D, uh, with a condition, it's in fact in coordinate a quadratic condition, with a condition that M is on the line D. This is the blow up of C2 at the point zero. So there is a 
projection, natural projection, on uh, the sp space C2 with sun m d to, to the point m. And this uh, projection is denoted by p. And the pullback of 0 by p is uh, all the line which pass by 0. So this uh, pi minus 1 of 0 is exactly p1. So 0 is rep replaced by p1. So you make uh, an explosion. It's like a polar coordinate in a certain sense. You replace the point by the angle, replace the point by circle explosion. <coughs> and in this space here, you have two charts. The first chart is uh, to say that you can put axis x and y. And the first chart is to say that you consider lines which are not vertical. And uh, the first chart is the x-axis and the, the t, which repair the line. And the second is uh, with the, uh, the axis. And there is a relation between the two charts which are given here. <coughs> and I want to show you that the, this type of transformation in certain cases Simplif simplify uh, foliation. I consider the, f the more simple foliation with sing singularities, which is the radial foliation. The leaves are the lines by zero, minus zero if you want. And uh, this foliation is given by this form. And you you make the blow up. You see that uh, the leaves are the level set of the two functions, y over x or x over y. But these uh, two functions are, in fact, s and t. So now, after the blow up, the foliation is without singularity. Okay. I make a pitch. If you want the polar in polar coordinate, you have the line in R2, and you replace you replace the point by the angle and the line are uh, like this now. And the foliation, which is given here by all the line passing by 0, here foliation is given by line, which are in chart parallel lines. So there is uh, no singularity. So you are given a picture in the real case. And in the real case, uh, the blow up of R2 is a Möbius bond, like this. OK? Now I take a foliation a little bit more complicated. given by a level set of rational function. Here, you consider this uh, rational question, this function, 
and you see that the level set are something like this. There is uh, this uh, curve, which is a cusp. <coughs> there is another, which is exactly the set of poles. So you have a maybe this instance uh, yeah. yeah and the gener generic uh, the generic level set is given by this equation with lambda different of zero, and this is a cubic, rational cubic, rational nodal cubic. Something like this. Oh. And the foliation is something like this, yeah? You have a cusp vertical line and the other bees are rational cubic with one double point, nodal cubic. And I make a blow up. And after blow up, there is no singularities. You have the P1, which is the pi minus one of zero. And you put in this, uh, in this you put, uh, for example, y, y is t, x, and you compute in the variable t and x this function, and you, 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 you see that the new level set of the are of this type, family of parables in the new, in the new variable. So after this manipulation, the, the foliation, are which are, which has one singularity at the origin in the first picture, and now ap after transformation, there is no singularity. Another example of this of the same time same type, but here it's, it needs two, two blow up. So I take uh, up, uh, this function, and it's easy to make the picture of the leaves of the level set of this uh, function. You have a cusp, uh, y2 plus x3. You have two lines, lines, uh, the two axes, <coughs> two axes, and you have now a family of uh, cubic of type of this type. And you see that at the origin, the axis, the x axis is tangent to a branch R4 cubic. So it's a family of nodal cubic with a common tangent, something like this. Up, up, up. Something like this. One and another. Something like this. You see? And you make a, 
a blow up, and after a blow up, you have this picture with uh, one singular point, and this singular point, if you look with a microscope, you see uh, something like the first example the with leaves, radial line, leaves, uh, lines by the origin. So you make another blow up, and after the second blow up, uh, the foliation have no singularities. classical example. And there is a theorem which is a so-called theorem of reduction of singularities. This theorem is due to Seidenberg. I don't remember, but if you look uh, at the bibliography of uh, my book with uh, Cano and Deserti, you have the, the exactly something like. Uh, but in fact, this uh, theorem was used by, for example, Brio Bouquet. In uh, so the proof is given here, but it's a tautology at this moment. And uh, what says the theorem? So you have a germ of holomorphic foliation at the origin in C2, and uh, the theorem says that after a finite sequence of blow-ups from a surface, I denote M of F, M of the foliation, it's a, it's a surface, and we have a composition of blow up, in fact, B. Then the transformed foliation B minus one F has a finite number of singularities, all simple. And now I give the definition of simple singularities. So, simple singularities are germ of foliation uh, which for which it's not possible to simplify by this pro procedure. And there are two types. So, the linear part of the form which are associated to the foliation for the local foliation have non-trivial linear part, you see. And there are two types with, uh, in the first case, a uh, number a coefficient lambda, which is not zero. In fact, it's not a rational number, negative rational number. And in the second case, maybe the coefficient is zero and we we make a distinction between these two cases. So after, uh, if you give me a foliation, after a finite number of blow-up procedures, then all singularities are of this type. Maybe you know the theory of uh, reduction of singularity in the case of uh, an analytic or algebraic set. There is a simple case, which is the reduction of singularity for curves. C2, for example, <laughs> you take uh, a curve, for example, there is a cusp, a 
another cusp, lines, something very complicated. Then there exists a map B, which is a composition of blow up, <coughs> such that after this composition, the, the curve is now a union of smooth curve. For example, this blue goes to this, this blue goes to, to this, for example. So there is a reduction of singularity for curve. In fact, it's consequence of Puiseux's theorem. And there is a reduction of singularities for any analytic uh, subset or manifold with singularities, which is due to Hiranaka. And this is uh, very difficult in any dimension. This is not difficult. This part is not difficult. This part is very difficult. And for foliation in dimension two, it's not so difficult. A little bit complicated. I want to say without comment that uh, the foliation given by simple singularities are well known in a certain sense. Quasi well known, that means that uh, for certain values of the number lambda, it's not clear it's not easy to describe the corresponding singularities. And there are many people many people who try to to work in this domain. Martinet, Jean Martinet, Jean Pierre Ramis, Jean Ecal, Bernard Malgrange. for the French school and uh, Ilyashenko with also Yokoz Ilyashenko Brujno many people <coughs> to give a good description of the simple singularity. In a certain sense, simple singularities are not simple. There is a well-known case, the Poincaré result, which says that if you have a form, a germ, which is uh, simple, from maybe with a plus other terms and with a coefficient lambda non-real for example non-real maybe positive yeah Then, then the foliation associated to omega is lin linearizable. That means there exists coordinates, new coordinates, u and v such that in this coordinate, the foliation is given by the linear part. It's something like, uh, if you want, uh, in the theory of function, of singularities of function, something like most 
theory, Morse reduction. But it's a little bit more difficult. If you look at the first the examples of the first teach, linear example, recall that if you have a form, linear form of this type, recall that we have two, three special leaves, uh, the singular point. And the two axis minus the singular point, and the other, lies, the other leaf are maybe complicated. But we have uh, here, we have two smooth curve which are closure, the closure of, of, a, of a leaf. Here you have a leaf, and the closure of the leaves is, is all the line, and here also. This type of curve is called an invariant curve or separatrix. And there is an old theorem by Rio Bouquet, which says that uh, if you have a simple singularities with uh, the first model with a lambda non-zero, then there are two smooth curves invariant, which are if you want the, the closure of a leaf. Rio Bouquet, if uh, F is simple with lambda non zero, then you have two curves which are smooth curves such that uh, this curve minus the singular point are leaves. And in the case in the case uh, with lambda zero, saddle dot case, it's a little bit more complicated. I want to try to show you a classical example of differential equation, which is a Euler equation. have in the note. You take uh, this equation. And you try to solve the equation by a point theory. And you can compute all the coefficients, and the solution is uh, something like factorial L. Something like this. So this is a div div divergent series, 
and in the saddle node case. So to this, to this uh, equation is associated uh, foliation. The foliation is given by this form. The earlier foliation and for this uh, foliation you see that the axis uh, is a leaf leaf minus minus zero and you have a formal leaf which the graph of the earlier series. That means that when you are in the regular case, you have such a picture, but when lambda goes to zero, maybe there is a explosion of the coefficient and the curve is now only formal curve. So it's here you are in the knot. And it's, it's, a, it's a simple singularity of foliation with a curious formal leaf. So now I give an uh, important theorem without proof because it's a difficult uh, combinatorial argument, which is due to Camacho and Sad. It's a paper in uh, Annals, which says that uh, for any germ of holomorphic foliation at zero in C2, then there exists uh, an analytic curve, which is an uh, invariant curve. That means uh, it's a union of leaves for any foliation. Take a foliation with a singularity, then uh, there exists a curve So it's at the smooth part of the curve. Is a union of leaves. Union, maybe the curve has two components. And in the old book, for example, INS, the book of the book on differential equation, maybe something like uh, and they are book by Brio Bouquet. At this moment, it's an evidence. This, this theorem is an evidence, and they give uh, a procedure to compute by Newton polygona. They, don't, they give procedure to compute the curve gamma, but uh, without an existential theorem. They have a procedure to compute, but. <laughs> So I give you an interpretation of the theorem in terms of uh, Puiseux theorem. 
maybe you know that if you have a irreducible curve then th you can you can choose a parametrization <coughs> which is a map from C in C2 such that the image of gamma is exactly the curve gamma image of gamma and the fact that the curve the smooth part of the curve gamma is a leaf is the same to say that when you make the pullback of the form which define our foliation the pullback by gamma is zero So the proof, the ingredient of the group, the proof, Kamashasad, theorem, is at first uh, the reduction of singularities. and the evolution of numerical invariants which give a sort of a degree of complication of the foliation. I give two examples. The first is uh, algebraic multiplicity. is exactly you have form which is of this type and you take you the order of the algebraic multiplicity it's the infimum of these two numbers and you have a which is a sum of homogeneous polynomials so a k plus a k plus one, etc. And with this is a non-zero polynomial, and nu, nu a is exactly this number k. And there is a another invariant, which is a Milner number. is exactly the dimension of the of the quotient of the function or the function by the ideal generated by A and B. For example, in the case uh, of a linear Linearly 
simple singularities, the two uh, invariants are one. And in the case of uh, Euler example, you have mu one and mu two. And uh, it is a sort of uh, you play, and the goal is to to have uh, at the end of the blow up something like mu or nu one. Right. And um, I want to speak uh, about uh, Malgrange uh, singular Frobenius theorem. And I have one, one hour. One hour. Yes, yes, so it's good. Malgrange. I have pas là ce matin, c'est très bien. It's a difficult theorem. And my point of view is not the, s the same. <laughs> no. So, you see, uh, in a certain sense, uh, foliation in dimension two are, in a certain sense, more complicated than in dimension three and other. For example, if you consider this linear case, or a perturbation of this case, and for lambda, uh, different of positive integral, then uh, it's not possible to, to have a function, holomorphic function, such that, non-constant, such that the level set of F R the leaf of the foliation. The only possibility to have such an F is to have a lambda in an integral. But in dimension three, we have Malgrange theorem, three and other dimension, which says the following. I take a germ of holomorphic co-dimension one foliation at the origin of Cn, and I suppose that the singularities are small. For example, the conditions say in dimension three that the singular set of it is exactly the point zero, exactly. And the conclusion is that uh, there exists an holomorphic function such that the level set of this function are exactly the leaves of O foliation. In dimension two, it's not possible to have such a beautiful theorem. Here you have a singularity which is uh, reduced to zero, and here also, but the dimension is bigger. I want to give the sketch of the proof, and uh, it's uh, something a little bit difficult. At first, uh, so we want to, to have something like this. The goal, the goal, and if you want 
put n well three. And the goal is uh, if f is def defined by the form omega, then we, then we want uh, to construct two functions. One is a unit. And the second is a non-constant function, <coughs> such that omega is exactly the product of the differential of f up to the multiplication. You see that the leaves associated to the, this exact form are exactly the level set of f. And so it's the same for omega. This is the goal. And at first, we want to construct uh, such f and g, but without estimation on coefficient. That means without uh, convergence property. That means we want to construct formal f and g. So I give the, st the strategy. And recall the durham sato theorem. From yesterday. We say that uh, if you have uh, one form, alpha, with uh, the dimension of the singularities of alpha greater than 3. Yesterday I gave the statement in dimension 3, so the condition is, the, is that the singularity of alpha is reduced to a point, and you have a two-form beta such that alpha wedge beta is 0, and the conclusion is that you have a division property which says that beta is exactly alpha wedge a certain one form holomorphic. But remark that uh, this one form is not well defined because you can modify by, the, by a multiple of alpha. And in fact, it's one of our problems. So I take uh, the integrability condition. <coughs> and this is alpha, and this is beta. And I apply the ram Cetus lemma. And you have a theta. Theta is omega 1 here with this notation such that the differential of omega is exactly omega wedge omega 1, but omega 1 is, is, is not will, well defined. Omega 1 is defined modulo omega. And you make a differentiation I make with the blackboard. So differentiation and this is uh, the omega wedge omega one minus the omega one omega. But this uh, but this is uh, zero because if you make omega one time the omega you have omega one omega one because this is zero. So this is zero. So a new way, you can uh, construct an omega two such that d omega one is omega omega two. 
and so on. And it's possible to construct uh, a list of uh, one form omega y such that uh, such that so in my space uh, in my space uh, cn <coughs> uh, maybe coordinate coordinate z and now i take t coordinate on c and the algorithm says that it's possible to construct a form on the space c cross cn and this form is big omega is dt plus omega zero which is omega plus t omega one plus it's a exactly the induction on of this type. And this new form in uh, this space is in fact integrable. And this uh, construction is known as the Godbillon V algorithm. V was a professor in Chambéry. Chambéry. And got beyond in Strasbourg. So uh, you see that uh, this form, this new form, omega, is uh, non singular because you have one for the co coefficient dt. So it's possible to apply the Frobenius theorem. So you have two functions, big F, big G, in the two variables T and Z, such that the big omega is G, big G time DF. And now you put T zero, and this is G F, and you put T zero. So this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. And at the end, you see that uh, the initial form omega is exactly the restriction to t, t0 of the big function g and the big function, the differential of the big function f, and you have something like this. Okay? But uh, there is a little problem. Uh, the problem is the following, is that uh, the this sequence, this form, maybe it's, an, it's not a convergent form. This is the problem. And the work of Marc Grange consists to choose at any steps of the construction of the algorithm is to modify the omega one, omega n, and so on, to have <coughs> at the end convergence of the form omega, and it's, it's uh, an hard analysis, very hard analysis. So I give uh, proof here without analysis in a certain sense. So the, the construction of Malgrange give a formal solution of the problem. So you have uh, by the algorithm, Godbillon the algorithm, you have a formal solution uh, 
and these are formal functions. So there is a first uh, reduction of the problem, which is a reduction passing by dimension two, which is due to Matei Moussu in a paper in a journal de l'école normale supérieure. And uh, the following. I have a germ of foliation in a CN and I take a C2 transversal to the foliation. Suppose we are in C3. In C3, you have foliation F, and you restrict to a certain C2, for example, horizontal fly, plane, and uh, <coughs> you suppose that the foliation is uh, transversal to this C2. That means that we have no tangencies like this. If you take a leaf, the leaf is in fact is transversal to the C2 outside the singularity. That means that is uh, to say that the C2 is transversal to F. And I suppose that the restriction of the F to the C2 is an F0. I suppose that F0 has a non-constant first integral. And the conclusion is that the big F as <coughs> an holomorphic integral. It's a, uh, I give the proof because it's a classical analysis. So I have the C2. From the C2, I have a function F0 which leaves with le level set. Here you have singularity for the small foliation and the big foliation. And for example, you have the level F1, here, the level F like this. And now <coughs> the leaves of the, the big F are transversal, so they cut transversal is a C2 like this. So on. So I take the decision that I take the decision to construct a function uh, here F0 <coughs> to construct the function F with value 1 on the picture blue, which pass by the line level if 0 is 1. And I say that uh, here, so the level set, the function f has value 1 over 2. You see? So, with this procedure, I have an extension 
extension f of f0 on uh, you have singularity, so you take something like the difference of two polydisc in C2. So this is the difference of two polydisc. And you make this manipulation. So you construct a function of the product of the difference of the two polydisc with, for example, a disc, something by compacity. And you apply Artog prolongation theorem to have a function inside the hole. So it's classical analysis, complex analysis. Artog's prolongation theorem says that this construction F gives a function an holomorphic function in a neighborhood of the point zero in the C3 or the CN. If you know after prolongation theorem, it's easy. If you don't know, it's uh, Excuse me. Because it's it's local. In fact, I construct germs along C two, along the C two. So if the leaf uh, is like this, I cut. Okay. In fact, the prolongation f is a germ or function, holomorphic function along the difference of two polydisc in C2. Okay? So now we have the We have an F in C2, in Cn, with a formal first inter integral. You have now the restriction of F given by to a C2 in Cn, but passing by zero, such that uh, with a property that if you have a first holomorphic first integral in this T C2, then you have holomorphic integral for the big F. And this F0 is defined by the restriction of the form omega to C2, and this restriction has a formal first integral, which is a restriction <coughs> of these two things. So now the problem is to prove the theorem in dimension two So you made to prove that in dimension two, if uh, one holomorphic form is of this type with a formal function, then it's possible to choose other function which are now convergent ones. And now there is a 
an argument of reduction of singularity. And this is this part. So I recall, so you have the big space, Cn, with, uh, big, with this omega with formal first integral. Now we restrict to uh, C2. And there is a remark. Remark. Uh, the formal function <coughs> is uh, irreducible. That means it's not possible to write as a product with uh, u and v not unit. And the reason is if you have such uh, uh, decomposition, then the intersection of the level set 0 of u and v, you think uh, something like this, it's formal, but it's classical algebra. So this is u zeros. This is the zeros. And uh, the intersection of the two hypersurfaces here is a singularity for th this function. But in my hypothesis, hypothesis uh, singularity is a uh, of codimension three, and this is of codimension two. So, such a function by O hypothesis is irreducible. It's in fact uh, F here in the big space, and this imply that the uh, restriction is reduced. That means that uh, if you write the decomposition in irreductible <laughs> factor like in, in polynomial. Then the exponent here are one. There is no multiplicity. Now I consider the reduction of singularities of the foliation in the two dimension space. And it is easy to see that uh, the level set zero is a formal, like in the earlier example, if you want, is a formal invariant curve. You have an example of such an objective earlier equation. And in fact, uh, each of the component also phi 1, phi s. Maybe at 
that means it's only formal. <coughs> and that means you have something like I make picture like this. And these formal curves are, if you want, formal leaf. And now I make the reduction of singularity. And I, if you want, suppose that it's it is sufficient to make one blow up. So I make one blow up. And you have the morphism P. And you have the you have singular point of the new foliation, which are simple. And you have the formal curve here. And the formal curves, it's a consequence of the theorem of reduction of singularity. These formal curves are smooth. Here you have the picture with uh, many uh, blow up. And we remark that the composition of the formal first integral is uh, an object which is something like a formal function along, along here by minus one of zero, so I, I say a formal function. Which is a first integral of the foliation, the new foliation after transformation. And now, all the singularity are. Ah. Now, with this condition, it's possible to compute with the end and to see that the singularities here are not saddle nodes. The existent, existent of first local integral implies that these singularities are simple but not saddle. So you have the Brio bouquet theorem. And the brio bouquet theorem says that you have two invariant curves, holomorphic, two invariant curves at each singularity. It's easy to see that one on the curve is uh, exactly the P1 in my example, the pi minus one, zero. And in the general case, you have many, many P1, here three, three P1. And you have another smooth invariant curve. But if you compute, in fact, we have unicity. So this curve here are convergent one. Initially, maybe they are formal, but by Brio bouquet, this curve, 
the curve. Formal curve defined by the component of O first integral are in fact holomorphic, are convergent. Okay. It's on this transparent. Yeah. And now I consider the this function here near one of the point here. I look at, for example, I take uh, this point M and this point in a good chart is 0, 0. And at M, you have one curve, which is uh, by minus 1, 0. And you have another curve, which is phi 1. 0, and these two curves are convergent. So you can choose coordinates. I take the same notation, coordinates x and y, such that, such that the yeah, it is the x axis, and here yeah, is the Y, y axis. And this implies that the F0 wrong time P is uh, of the following type. Uh, maybe multiplicity here, time maybe a multiplicity here, time, uh, unit, formal unit. That is, the, the two level set, zero level set of uh, F0 after transformation is uh, given by, the two level set are given by two axes of coordinate. So you have uh, something like this. But uh, the phi 1 is without multiplicity in F0. So the exponent here is 1. So you have something like this. So you have a foliation, local foliation now, in a small polydisc, with the first integral of this type, formal first integral, but of a special type. And now, I look at uh, a vector field, the first presentation in the first stitch of uh, foliation in dimension 2. It's easy to see that uh, the foliation in this small polydisc is given by a vector field, and the leaves, local leaves are the trajectories of this vector field. And the vector field is of this type because the two axes are invariant. And here, the, the, the V is a convergent one. And this uh, X has the 
function, the W is the U hat in my transfer load. The fact that uh, you have such a first integral, formal first integral, implies first that uh, the value of V in the vector field is zero. That means uh, you know the linear part of your vector field, the first point. And the fact that you have a, a first integral of this type means that uh, you can choose, if you want formal new coordinate, which says that the vector field is in fact linear. The reason is something like this. This is uh, x time time y, big Y with uh, big Y is uh, you take a root of W. This is essentially the reason. So, so the, the vector field is uh, linearizable, but with a change of coordinates which are maybe not convergent. But this implies that the flow of the one parameter group of the vector field is uh, periodic. With a formal linearization, it's easy to see that the <coughs> flow at the time 2ip is exactly the identity. And it's a, it's a formal computation without difficulty. So the flow the vector field, the flow, define an action of the circle on this space, or on this germ of, of space. And there is an old, an old theorem by, it is known as carton bochner theorem. which says the following. take G, a compact group, for example, the circle, uh, which uh, act on a manifold, for example, this domain with a fixed point and that means the orbit of M under the action of G is exactly M. Then the local, then near the point M, the action is uh, locally conju conjugated to a linear action. If you want, you have uh, uh, for each element, you have the <coughs> representation of G in the automorphism of O manifold, M. And uh, the, if you take an F, big F, 
you take the image, and this is a uh, deformorphism of M with a fixed point in N. And uh, you have an act a local action of If you want, you have a, a representation of G in uh, the linear if M is of dimension N in G L N which F associated the differential of the image of M at the point M. And the theorem of Cardon Boschner says that the action, the initial action, is the same up to a diffeomorphism to is the same locally as a linear action. And in fact, it's an easy exercise. In fact, it's an exercise. It's uh, only the existence of a And that means uh, in O situation that if you take uh, you have the vector field x, you have the, the flow, and you have the real flow. And this define an action of S1 on uh, this little open set, M. And this action by carton Boschner theorem, this action is linearizable. Locally. And this implies that the ve holomorphic vector field is linearizable. And this implies that it's up to diffeomorphism. X is, uh, I don't remember my notation. It's the linear vector field P X DDX minus Y DDY minus or plus minus. And this new vector field has an holomorphic first integral, which is the, monom the monomial uh, pa -pa 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 x, y, p. is a convergent now. So recall that you have uh, the point, singular point, simple singular point. And now, after we have a formal <coughs> first integral, and now you have a new first integral, which is this monomial. So locally, the leads are given by the level set of this monomial. Now, you have two first integral, this monomial, and this. And it is easy to see the following. The, this formal function is constant along the level set of the monomial because they are common first integral of uh, the same foliation. That means that there exists uh, uh, 
function in one variable such that the formal first integral is a composition by this L of this monorail. But this is a formal function. And it is easy to see that the, the first, it's a function of one va variable. Huh? The first derivative is not zero. So this function by implicit, uh, by the implicit function theorem, you can take the, the inverse. So you take the inverse. And you apply to, to the initial first integral. So it's a new, is a new formal first integral. And after some blow up, this formal first integral is in fact a, a mon monomial, holomorphic monomial. At some point, it's a holomorphic polynomial. So this is formal, this is holomorphic. And there is a lemma. It's an interesting lemma, which is due to Toucheron <coughs> and uh, Matei Moussu. There are two approaches which is the following. You take, take a formal OS series in n variable. And you make one blow up. Make one blow up. And you compose this formal object by P. This is, in fact, a, a formal object along pi minus 1 of 0. And you suppose that this formal object is convergent in some point. Suppose that this object at a certain point M, in fact, is convergent. Then the result says that the initial function, formal function, is holomorphic. It's an exercise, but important exercise. So we have it, we are exactly in this situation. This uh, formal new first integral, after some manipulations of blow up is a monomial, which is convergent. So this thing is convergent first integral. So this is, this gives a proof of Malgrand theorem. It seems that uh, there is no analysis. The analysis is reduced in uh, carton bochner theorem. And carton bochner theorem is not, uh, is not difficult theorem. It's, it's uh, something. Uh, like uh, you make average, it's, uh, it's in book in, uh, for first level students. First level. Okay. Now I want to give uh, maybe a popuri of 
Malgrange CRM, there are many. Uh, five minutes, ten minutes, five minutes, is good? Yeah, 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 five minutes. Just uh, some word. Maybe with a transparent. So there are Malcolm's theorem on singular space. That uh, means you have a foliation now on co dimension one foliation on space X, which is singular. So you have, uh, on the smooth part of X, you have only ordinary foliation. And you make a hypothesis on the t a hypothesis on the singularities of the foliation. and on the singularities of X, and you have uh, also Malgrange, Frobenius type theorem. I want to give uh, this a comment on a theorem by Franck Loré and me because I don't understand the theorem. So if uh, one body understands theorem, I want to the to have the explanation. So I give a, a germ of foliation at the origin of Cn. And when you have a first integral of this type, f and g, and you compute the first jet of omega, the first significant, significant term of the Taylor expansion of omega, the first term is exact, is a differential of the first term of f, and uh, we say that uh, the hypersurface f nu plus 1, 0 is a tangent cone of f, the definition. And you can verify that, in fact, this. Uh, tangent cone is given by Euler, Euler formula. And now we have the following theorem. For example, in C3, dimension greater than 3, I take a form which is an integrable form. You have a foliation germ. And we suppose that uh, the tangent cone of F is a uh, irreducible. That means that uh, f nu plus 1 is irreducible. And now you suppose that uh, the degree of this uh, f nu plus 1, that means f nu plus 1, you suppose that this degree is the power of a prime. And the conclusion is that uh, the foliation has a nonomorphic first integral. So it's possible to write the proof. The proof it's a, is a proof by holonomy argument. And uh, it seems that there are something like uh, algebraic geometry in positive characteristic here, something like this. And we don't see uh, the reason of this theorem. You, you are able to prove the theorem, but we don't, we don't understand the theorem. You see? So that's all for today. <laughs>